Hi, everybody, and welcome to Get Your Business on Google with the Champaign Public Library. My name is Laura Rice, and I am uh, an adult services library associate, and I help host and run some programs here at the library. Um, we also have Madeline Wolski, who is our business librarian. So she and I are going to kind of tag a team this presentation for you, and I hope that by the end of this, you will know exactly exactly how to get your business on Google. So Madeline, I'm going to turn it over to you to get us started. Great. Thank you so much, Laura, for that incredible mm -hmm. introduction. <laughs> so just a brief overview about some stuff going on at the library. Uh, we have some amazing one-on-one -on -one meetings between you and one of our amazing librarians. Those are called Book of Librarians, and you can always schedule those online through our website, champagne.org, or you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one over chat, which is available during our open hours, or send us an email email anytime at your convenience and that's librarian at champagne.org. We are open to the public, happy to have you in. And a little bit of Zoom info for everyone here today. Uh, I would like you to kind of feel free to ask questions um, about the stuff we're covering today. Also, if you have any tech issues, feel free to also put them in the chat. The only thing I want to uh, kind of make you make you aware of is ensuring who you are sending those messages to so you can either choose to send a message to laura or myself or you can send a message to everyone so i like to encourage you to send messages to everyone just so people can know what kind of questions are coming up um, if you have any input feel free to pop it in there um, and if you would prefer to verbalize your question feel free just to let us know in the chat or you can always raise your hand and we will unmute you uh, all right so without further ado laura are we ready i think we're ready I think we're ready to get started. So let's let's see how we get our business on Google. Fantastic. So Google My Business, what is it? It is one of the best free tools from Google that helps business owners manage their online presence. So while having a Google My Business is a great first step to garner some local exposure, it really optimizes the way that consumers can find your business. So I'm just going to go ahead and click here. And Laura, can I confirm that you can see where I'm at? Sure can. Fantastic. So you can kind of see this preview here um, and Google My Business. It's, it's essentially a profile that increases your search visibility by allowing customers to get a little glimpse of information to contact you, um, reviews that you've that people have submitted photos and even star ratings. So Google has set it up really well because they want to make sure that people can find the information, um, your products, your services that you're throwing out there. So going back to my little PowerPoint here, this <laughs> little, little bit of a fuzzy picture today. I wanted to make sure we didn't do any of our local businesses. So I took this example from Victorious SEO. I kind of want to ask everyone here, and this is an example of a unoptimized business profile. So this is a profile that Google might have just taken the information off your website, um, off maybe any other things online. Um, and we can see it's, it's pretty bare. We know the title. It looks like there is a website attached, directions. We can save or we can even call them. It's nice that there's a phone number, but it definitely has missing information. I don't know when this place is open, uh, how, when I can go there. And also this kind of picture on the bottom, it looks like it's probably from one of those Google cars that uh, they just take generic photos and that really doesn't tell me anything about this business so i kind of want to ask everyone what emotion comes to mind when you see this listing and also would you visit this business so while everyone's comments come in um, i'll share with you my reaction so the fact that there isn't a lot of images i kind of feel like it's a little untrustworthy and i'm also the kind of person who i want to know exactly where i'm going 
And if I don't see a preview, I'm probably not going to go there, like of the exterior of the building. Um, also, the fact that there aren't any custom reviews, I don't, I don't trust that. We really want to focus on things, at least as consumers. Um, I follow recommendations from my peers, families, and friends. And if I'm searching something new, like I'm looking for a local chamber of commerce in this example, I don't have any friends who can suggest it. So then I rely on other people's reviews. This doesn't have that. So it looks like Bernard has chimed in. He says it's blank. It's bare. He doesn't like it. So that's real. That's real. Laura, do you have anything to add? Yeah. I mean, when I look at it, I think I the word that came to mind was bleak like <laughs> I I look at it and I'm I'm thinking like exactly what you said is this trustworthy um it doesn't really give me an idea of what services are offered at this business like sure it's a chamber of commerce but what would I visit the chamber of Com commerce to find out so I think it definitely it, it doesn't make me want to go to the business I can tell you that yeah yeah all right, so now let's see an optimized business profile. Again, think about the emotions that come to mind and ask yourself if you would visit this business. We can see that it has a highlighted, we can see the stars there, almost five stars, which is the highest rating on Google, um, 72 reviews. We also have a kind of, what is it? This is an auto upholsterer in LA. Um, solid address. I know when they're open. Um, I love the fact that they also have like 19 answered questions and answers. So I would be able, if I had a question about this, like, well, do they service my exotic uh, vegan coconut husk leather car interior? Maybe someone else has asked that. <laughs> and I might, I might, uh, it basically makes it easier for me as a consumer to see if their services um, are exactly what I'm looking for. And here's just a quick stat because, you know, librarian, I can't, I can't not share. Um, but 88% of consumers read reviews to determine the quality of a local business. And those reviews are largely in part from what they get from Google My Business. So right here we can see there's highlighted reviews like best price in town. Um, it does give kind of a, there is a one star there, but obviously the five, the, the five stars kind of outweigh that. So Laura, do you want to share any anything regarding your emotions on this business? Yeah, definitely. When I, I mean, when I see this, similar to what you said, it looks legitimate. I can see that people have interacted with this business. They've been satisfied when they've uh, used the business. I like that there's photos of their work. I think that's really important for a business who's actually performing a service. I also like that uh, the popular times are listed. Um, so yeah, I mean, more information is always better. Support it. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Sure. So here's a question. Like, well, you already have a website. You might already have social media. Why do you need a Google My Business account? Well, let's go to just google.com and let's see what happens. If I just go ahead and search for coffee near me. So this is a local search. I, it's based um, in essentially a location-based search because I have near me. And I can see these first three recommendations. So this is exciting because these first three recommendations are going to get 60% of the clicks from all consumers. And that's just people don't like to search. They like to have information in a readily available place and they don't kind of, it, it's just the culture behind how we look for information. We just don't dig. That's just not what's what's done. So what exactly are these first three here? These are kind of what were called the map pack. So how it's next to the map. We see these three right below it. So these three listings receive about 25% uh, more clicks than anything else. Uh, well, not anything else, but anything within the Google My Business um, area. And these also make up 50% clicks from the people who actively search. So if I click view all right here, I can see then all of the other coffee stores in near me, near me. And I am 
at the library right now. So it's going to be at the library. And so you might ask, well, Madeline, why did those three get to the top? Especially because I'm going back to the previous page. I mean, Flying Machine, Avionics, that's downtown Champaign. These are also downtown Champaign, but I mean, this is 4.6, 4.6 reviews. There's some higher reviews here that aren't really close to you. Why wouldn't Google have the higher reviewed uh, businesses near you? And that is because there are three different factors that determine the ranking of this Google listing. So the first one is just relevance. And that is essentially how well that business profile matches with the search. So the search was the coffee near me. And so near me, since that was my search, it probably is going to rank distance as a uh, more important factor. Um, and again, dis distance is the second factor. So where exactly that person is searching for either on their mobile device or physical location, um, how close that other business is. And then the third one is prominence. So that's how well known a business is. So for example, a business that has um, 76 reviews is gonna have a higher prominence than one with just one or two. Um, but prominence also hooks up to how much information you have on maybe a website, how many people at your Facebook handle or Instagram handle. Um, essentially, it's, it's where, how much information about your business is available for someone to find. So that's the prominence right there. Um, it's also worth noting that there's no way to request or pay for a better local ranking on Google. And that's incredible for small business owners. Um, and Google does its best job to keep the search algorithm confidential. So their whole um, goal is to make Google My Business, especially when it comes to local searches, as fair as possible for everyone. So do we have any questions about that? I feel like we're pretty good. And Laura, feel free to chime in if you ever want to add anything. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. So now you have to ask yourself, um, whenever you're making a decision of, that could affect your business, um, does utilizing Google My Business and making one, does it make sense for what I offer? Think about what your services are. Um, are you an artist? Will it make sense for someone to search for artists near me or... Um, if you don't have a brick and mortar location, do you think this is worth it for you? Um, next, what will it add to my business? If maybe you find your audience really interacts with you over Facebook and you don't have a lot of other people trying to find you on Google, maybe it doesn't make sense to make a Google My Business account. Number three, which I would almost say is kind of one of the most important things. Is it sustainable for my current lifestyle? Um, so are you going to be able to dedicate maybe like a couple minutes a day or maybe an hour a week if you want to go all out in um, actively making your profile uh, the best it can be? Are you going to be actively responding to people's reviews? Is that maybe not something you think you can do with your time frame? Um, and lastly, does my business qualify? So Laura and I had a really entertaining time, and that's a <laughs> kind way to put it, uh, figuring out how to make a Google My Business account, especially because we are both entrepreneurs and we do something pretty similar. So I design jewelry um, and other accessories, and Laura also designs jewelry, but she makes um, clothing and other accessories. You might notice her headband. She makes that. She made that. Um, but I know I'm speaking for myself. The main way that I get my product out to people is by going to craft fairs and markets or by selling through um, Instagram. And Same here. Yeah, yeah. You also do sell through Etsy and you mm -hmm. have a website. But would you say you do you rely on your brick and mortar location, Laura? Or do you have one? <laughs> I don't have a brick and mortar location. Um, and not, and even on top of that, I actually don't make a lot of sales online or, or through Etsy. Most of mine are in person at markets. It's really the best way for me to get my, my things out into the world. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So 
if you do have a brick and mortar location, a storefront that people can physically walk into, you have to get a Google My Business account. Agree. And the most frustrating thing um, during the research, finding all this information about this, it is incredible that only 55% of businesses actively have a Google My Business account. I mean, that's crazy. And these include, these are brick and mortar businesses. These are storefronts. And it makes sense for you to want to increase your traffic, increase customer um, just discovery by utilizing this tool. Um, so the next thing is a service-based business. So if maybe instead of having a location where people can walk into, you go to them. It could be that you offer a closet organizing services and uh, your home is where you do your business out of and you want to make that address. Um, you don't want to kind of broadcast where you live to the world. Um, you would essentially change what type of listing you have. Um, but since you're service-based, you can absolutely and should get a Google My Business account. So that was an example of closet organizing. Maybe you're an event planner. Um, maybe you uh, do lawnscaping. Those would be excellent things. Well, those are excellent industries that you should get a GMB account for. And lastly, departmental. So this one's like a little confusing. Um, so you might notice, so at the library, we're a great example of a departmental business because we have the library itself. We also have a cafe located in the library, which you might have noticed it did not show up when I searched the coffee near me. Um, we'll get into that later. And then we also have our friend shop bookstore in the basement of our building. So we have, you could argue, we offer three different kind of separate departments within our library as a whole. So that would make sense for each of those very different services to have its own separate GMB account. And from now on, I'm going to be referring to Google My Business as GMB because it's a mouthful and I like efficiency. <laughs> GMB. <laughs> GMB. It's the one for me. All right. So what if you think you might not fit into those categories? So um, three main components that really don't work well with a Google My Business account, online businesses, Google will suspend accounts, first off, that don't really meet their um, qualifications. And if you simply sell online, you don't do anything in person or come to people or go to people, um, Google My Business isn't for you. Again, this is kind of a local, so as in geographic, um, marketing tool. Um, so always keep that in mind. If, if you make connections with people, it makes sense. If you are completely behind a computer screen and just selling things online, it doesn't really make sense. Um, next, meetings and classes. Again, location-based. If you don't own the place that you're teaching classes at, you can't qualify for a Google My Business account. If maybe you are doing classes out of your backyard, or if you maybe offer personal training, but you go to people's homes, that would be a service. But if you are, for example, a fitness instructor who works for the local park district and you want to kind of, you're like a brand, you're, I'm Madeline Wolski fitness instructor. I go to whoever, whenever. Google will more than likely flag that as a, an account that doesn't meet their criteria. So in that instance, especially if you're kind of a brand, maybe you want to focus more on um, your social media presence, um, other ways of making that personal connection with people. Um, and lastly, rental properties, Airbnbs, uh, those do not count as a Google My Business. Like it's, it's, a little confusing because again if you own the home that you're renting to people yes that's a location people go to but those aren't the types of businesses that google wants to have within this system so again let me know if you have any questions about if you qualify if you don't qualify it seems like most of the people here um, feel free to share your industry and we can dive a little bit deeper if you'd like um, but I want to kind of give the reins over to Laura, and she is going to take us through all the steps of um, making your own Google My Business account. 
Yes, thank you, Madeline. Hmm. So I'm going to share my screen here. Let me make sure I'm opening the proper tab. Are you able to see, I have Google My Business and I've actually got the library's Google account pulled up? Yes, it looks marvelous. Okay, wonderful. So what we're gonna do is go through how to create an account. Uh, you do need a Google account to do this. So if you do not have a Google account, you will need to set up a Gmail so that you're able to accomplish this. Um, let's see here. So I'm gonna do exactly what Madeline did. We're just gonna say, Google my business. And to add on to that, sometimes if you've already have a business, but you're not, sh you might not be sure if you have already a listing, just go ahead and Google yourself. Google yep. your own business. Yep, you certainly can. You certainly can, and I'll, we'll kind of walk through that too. Um, so first, we're just going to go to create an account. So I'm already logged into Google, so it's already assuming that I want to start as Champagne Librarian, and I sure do. So we're going to say get started, and here's where we're going to start by putting in our business name. So we're going to do kind of a, a fake uh, business right now. So. Um, I'm going to use an example that I used in a previous presentation, which is, what if Madeline and I were opening a bakery? And I have titled our bakery, Baked. All right, business category. So we're going to start, I just want to start by searching, searching bakery, and it does come up. And if your bakery was going to be also a market, or it was also going to sell artisan goods, you might consider adding more than one category, but the primary category when people are searching for you is going to be bakery. So I'm going to go ahead and choose next here. And do you want to add a location? And I absolutely do because this is hypothetically a brick and mortar store. So I'm going to use the library's address for this since we are just doing a test here. Green Street, Champaign, Illinois, and it automatically fills in these things for us. Okay, do you provide deliveries or home office visits? And for this particular business, we will not. However, if your business was what Madeline was talking about if, uh, as a service, you would go ahead and choose yes, because you're able to go to someone to offer the service. I will tell you if you choose no and you do not have a physical location for your business, Google will already flag your account immediately here. Um, Madeline and I did several tests with our businesses since they are online primarily and we, we do travel to shows. Um, so we did several different tests where we chose different options to see what would allow us through, what would get our businesses verified. So if you're interested in doing what we did, where we are adding our businesses because we do take our jewelry and clothing making businesses out into the public, right here is where you'd wanna say yes, that you provide a service. Okay. Contact. So you do want to add a phone number or a website. Uh, we're not going to do a website today because we don't have one, but I am going to go ahead and add a phone number so that you can see how this works. And again, this is just the library's phone number here. You could also opt to get a free website. It looks like through Google based on uh, your info here. I'm not familiar with this, but it's something that you could explore if you don't have a website and you're interested. We're gonna see how far this will this will take me. Okay, choose a way to verify. So we're not really able to do the call or text verify here because this is a landline. So what I ended up doing for my own personal business was um, choosing to get a postcard by mail. So I do want to talk to you about how that process worked. I'm not sure if y'all can see me or if you're just seeing my screen, but if you can, I'm going to show the postcard. This is my verification code. Don't worry, it's not going to work for you. So I'm not really submitting any personal information to you all. But um, Google, what they did, it took about 
four days, I think. And I chose the postcard option and they sent this postcard to my home and I provided the verification code and it legitimized my business. So it was a really nice way for me who I didn't want my personal address just out in the world on Google listed um, for my business. So I went this route and it was actually really easy. It was surprised by how easy it was. So I would choose postcard by mail if you're not interested in having your address listed. So I'm going to choose postcard by mail here and see just how far I get. We can always delete this business, so we don't need to worry about it causing an issue here. I'm going to just click and see what the other options are so that you can see here too. So we've just, looks like we've just got postcard and phone number as a possibility. I'm gonna go ahead and just choose verify later. I wanted to walk you through these steps, but we're obviously not verifying this business since it is not legitimate. Okay, business hours. This is so, so, so important if you are offering a brick and mortar store or if a, you're offering a service that is only available for certain times of the day. So this, I mean, it's so important that you add the hours in here. Like I can't stress enough. Um, I feel like most people are aware, but when you're searching for a service or a business, I, I don't know the exact statistic, maybe Madeline does, but I'd say most, most of the time you're using the Google information to determine that business's hours, their phone number, and their website. It's it's very infrequent that you're going to scroll down and actually look at the websites that popped up in your search. I would say most of the time people are using that information and assuming that it's accurate and are probably upset if it's inaccurate. So I would make sure that you're, you're strategic and that you're adding those hours that you're open. People are going to use it. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to start by putting in my Sunday hours, which is noon to 630. That seems random, but that's that's what I've chosen here. And let's say we're open also and we're open until six. I'm going to change this to 6 p.m. because it's going to bother me. OK, and we're not going to go through all of them. Just because this is a demonstration here. Okay, so messaging, I think it's important that you add messaging if you want people to be able to contact you. And I do believe that, Madeline, correct me if I'm wrong, if you're adding messaging, is that how the, the Q&A questions are popping up? Are those messages public? No, so the okay. messaging is not public. Uh, you can kind of see on the screen, they have an image of a phone. So most so Google essentially will let you manage messaging options uh, through the browser, but also through okay. an app they have. Um, but okay. yeah, the Q and A is completely different from the messaging. The messaging is private. Okay, so you have the option to turn this on and off. I'd recommend just turning it on and just being sure that you're vigilant about checking. Um, here's a business description. So this is where you can add in 750 um, characters or less, you can add the information about your business. So this would be something I would recommend being short and sweet and also hitting the key points that you want. So if your bakery has a specific message that you want to send, I, I want you to go ahead and add this in the description. And I'm going to show you real quick um, my personal business and how it looks. And I'm going to show you exactly where that feature pops up. So I'm going to switch my screen over here. So my business is called Cult Classics Vintage. And I did go ahead and add a couple of hours here for mine. Laura, um, yeah. Would you be able to um, share the new screen with your business on it? Oh, oh shoot. Let me stop share and then do a new one here. Now, can you see it? Sure can. Okay, great. Thank you. So my business is called Cult Classics Vintage, and this is how it appears uh, in Google My Business. I have chosen specific hours on weekends that I would be available for answering messages. Um, or any questions about my business. Since it's traveling, I don't have particular hours every single day. Um, but at the very bottom, you can see 
it says from Colt Classics Vintage, and then I have just a brief message about my business. So I've written, Colt Classics inspires you to get dressed every day. We reimagine forgotten vintage linens and create clothing from vintage and repurposed linens, towels, curtains, sheets, blankets, and fabric. So that is just a snippet from my website, actually, and it just, I, I hope that that gives the, gives the customer an idea of what what services I'm offering. So you can tell that I am upcycling clothing when you read yeah. that description. And to add on that, if you want to scroll back down, it's yeah. so nice that you have, um, you've adopted your mission statement or what exactly you provide, but the words that you use within that description, those also kind of I recommend pulling maybe terms from there that people are going to search for. Like I know on Instagram, it's so trendy right now to find like vintage towel shirts. Mm -hmm. People, if they search for like sh central Illinois vintage clothing, because she has vintage in that description and also in the title, it's going to be popping up. Um, so utilize that description portion to really think about what are people going to search for that I provide and kind of combine that in there as well. Yeah, and even even taking that approach, um, I, I probably will revise this statement. I my business tends to be like a revolving door, I suppose. So it kind of is just whatever thing I'm interested in making or working on at the time. So this may change from time to time. I used to just sell vintage clothes that didn't have I didn't alter at all. I just sold them as is. So if I start adding that back into my repertoire, I might up update this um, description a little bit. So anyway, you can see on mine, and I wanted to use this as an example because I actually don't have that much information. Um, I did select that my business is available in the Champaign-Urbana area. So you can see it kind of has this little, um, what am I calling this? Uh, so that's the area your business serves. Yeah, but this outline, sorry, around the area. So anyway, it's not super populated because I'm not a brick and mortar business and Google really is designing this mainly for people offering brick and mortar or service-based. So I'm gonna pop back over to the Google My Business setup here. So this is where you put your business description in. You can also add photos. So I would recommend adding, there's several different types of photos you could add. Um, recommend adding, so think about that first example that Madeline shared. It was just the like Google Maps image of that business. I recommend putting an exterior photo, maybe putting, if, if we're doing a bakery, let's add an interior photo of the space. You might want to consider adding a picture of the case that you are, your like display case for your pastries. Um, if you're also a business that serves um, or a bakery that has coffees and teas, consider adding that. People love looking at photos of the services that you're offering. A lot of people are visual learners and that's going to stick with them and it's going to inspire them to want to go to your location. You want to think about what makes your location stand out amongst other, other businesses. So if you are a bakery and a coffee shop, we have several of those here, which is wonderful, but they're all different. They all offer different things and you might choose to go there for a different purpose. So make sure that that's displayed in your photos that you choose. We're gonna go in and just act as though we are adding a photo here, just so y'all can see. There we go, suddenly I've got my beautiful bakery image here. We're gonna skip getting our $100 advertising credit. Um, let's see here. I'm going to say continue. So this is taking us to our dashboard. So you can see here that I have, there's our business, there's our address. You can see here that we've got several options. You can continue to edit this profile daily if you want. Um, I'm going to pass this back over to Madeline here in a moment, and she's going to talk a little bit more thoroughly about the dashboard and also about the Google My Business app. Um, was there anything I left out about creating, a, creating the account, Madeline? 
No, I think you you did a really wonderful job and kind of taking us through the basics. Yeah, it, it sounds intimidating. I think like adding it on Google, I, it sounds intimidating. I was personally intimidated to even try it. Um, so I'm really happy this teaching this webinar actually pushed Madeline and I both to experiment with adding our own personal businesses to, um, to Google. So I'm happy that we were able to kind of work through and troubleshoot some of these things for you um, so that maybe it's helpful for you to watch two entrepreneurs in this area kind of stumble through this process with you. I like the whole stumble through. We really, stumbled that's, a that's little what bit. It is. Yeah, we did. <laughs> well, <laughs> it we was made it through. Yes, especially as two people who do not have brick and mortar and who kind of are more side hustlers than full, this is our full-time gig right here. Right. Um, I actually wouldn't be surprised if my Google My Business profile for, for my business actually gets suspended or rejected in the future because- Same here. Because of my services and the fact mm -hmm. that I am really only active um, at market. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I, I kind of wish I used to teach watercolor painting lessons and I wish that I would have, I, I actually don't know at the time if Google My Business was a thing, I'm really not sure, but I do wish I would have been able to add it because I, I think it could have been helpful. I think it that's a service where I am actually traveling and like teaching. And so anyway, I think there's a lot of, I think you can think outside the box and, and you can try to make yourself fit Google's Google's terms and see how it works for you. Absolutely. No, that's fantastic. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about optimization and then we're going to go into the dashboard and figure out, okay, what does all this actually mean when we're doing it? So I have this graph right here. Optimization is essentially a term that's like, how can we get you in that map pack, that top three Google My Businesses that were um, on the front page, even before we clicked on the map icon itself. Um, so you can see this graph right here. This is from Moz. They do a lot of just like in analysis on how people find things online. So you can see this, the largest, one of the largest tiers here are my business sig signals. So people actually choose. So um, the main reason why they find or, or why they want to use your business um, are actually through the map pack at the very top. So ways to adjust your GMB listing to get to that top three is first and foremost, um, and Laura kind of touched on this, but correct and complete information on all of your platforms. So that means that you have the same address. So ours is 200 West Green Street for the library. Are you spelling out the West or are you just using the W? If that is different on your website versus on your GMB listing, Google might tack that as an inconsistency. And the top reason why accounts get suspended or marked, flagged by Google is because of those inconsistencies between all the different platforms. So you really want to double check, maybe even edit your Facebook, your um, website, um, any other material that's out online just so it's all consistent. Next is choosing the right and accurate category. Um, so that was when Laura chose bakery. Um, and I have a link here. It's, this is a really helpful. And Laura, just confirming you can see this. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great. So this is actually a listing of the 2,400 Google categories. It's so important to ensure that you get the right one um, because that's kind of the biggest key phrase uh, that people are going to search for. So essentially, the bigger your category, the less likely you'll appear in searches. Um, again, whenever we're trying to identify our audience, we want to make sure we're targeting the people who are most likely to utilize our business or services versus everyone. So this is just a good list. And when we send out the PowerPoint, you'll be able to click through um, and kind of figure out what works best for you and your business. So let's go back. And Laura, just confirming this is back to the PowerPoint. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. I always have to double check. <laughs> I should have checked clearly. So oh, no, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, so the next thing is this, the attributes. So Laura, since she is a woman, woman who owns her own business, Google actually allows you to personalize your business a little bit more, which is 
really fun because it kind of really straddles that vein between the social media and then just a blank web page. Um, it's kind of best of both worlds. We have a Miley Cyrus moment, if you will. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> one such attribute might be woman-owned business, black-owned business, LGBTQ plus friendly. Um, they have a new COVID category. It's just additional segments that people can glean more information about your business or brand. So Laura did a great job of talking about photos and media. Um, and I don't know if you'll remember or attended, we had taught a class on stock photography. Don't use stock photography for this. Google, again, will flag an account that's taking a very obvious stock photo. And I think Laura really covered the great, especially if you have a brick and mortar, exterior photos. Maybe consider adding a photo in the daytime and nighttime. Because if you're like me, I don't drive well in the dark and I'm completely going to use exterior just like landmark pinpoints to tell me where I'm going, where I'm at. Interior photos, product photos. If you're a service-based industry, get photos of that interaction. I think with um, the pandemic, we how we do customer service virtually has changed so much because you don't get that initial one-on-one -on -one interaction. Um, we want to make sure that we convey like, hey, this is a warm welcome environment. Like on the library's website, we have an amazing photo of Laura helping someone at the front desk. And she has like the biggest genuine smile on her face because that's who she is. She's happy to be there. She's happy to help. That conveys a warmth attitude. And I, as a consumer, am more likely to visit that business. So there's another option, adding products and services. People can't purchase off of a little product or service that you list, but you can embed a link that takes them straight to your website. This does get a little complicated because if you are selling um, like alcohol, firearms, um, anything that might, again, put up flags and um, in the references for this PowerPoint, we do have a link to what exactly you can and can't put um, within GMB. Um, but it's, again, an easy way for people to just see what you provide, see what you offer. Yeah. And yeah. And lastly, the most important part of optimizing your listing is interacting with your potential and current and former customers. So that's posting regularly within GMB. That's answering questions. That's getting more reviews because I think I've said it earlier, 88% of that choice that, that someone makes to purchase your product is because of a review. It's because of a recommendation. So let's dive in and figure out how to monitor our own profile. So we have here the home. And again, this is for um, Champagne Public's GMB account. Um, we can see just on this home screen, it's a brief overview. It has kind of like how we can increase, I don't know, their rating of how complete our profile is. We have these create post, create ads. Of course, again, this is Google is a business. Nothing is for free. They want you to purchase advertising. The cool thing is once you optimize your account, you're already going to be on that front page. So why do you need to advertise anyway? Um, it gives you performance information. This is, again, just a brief overview of this kind of bar on the left-hand side. So let's dive in a little bit more. I had talked about posts. So create your first post. This is where you share announcements, uh, news, you might have events, or even discounts. So this is really helpful. Um, and, and what exactly goes into a great post? It would be understanding what type of post you're putting up. So again, it has, let me move my little screen here, a COVID update. It can be an offer. It can be what's new. Ensuring that the it essentially is the best layout for what you provide. Um, always add a photo or a video. Um, you might have seen if you're on Instagram, like Instagram is now prioritizing video content. And because of the success of TikTok, um, really all social media platforms are really prioritizing video. So if you actually have video, 
please use it over a photograph, um, but keeping kind of some high standards. Make sure it's a clear photo, again, one that you've taken, or maybe it's a stock photo that you've manipulated in Canva or another graphic design to maybe have some um, like graphics on it that kind of convey what exactly the event or offer is. Um, you wanna make sure your title is concise and short. Cause again, always keep in mind that people, they want the information as quickly and easy as possible. And again, Google is going to prioritize concise info. Um, with the more details you typically, so if we open that up, you can add, I think the limit's like about 1500 characters. Um, and this is where you really want that call to action um, with the button. So I always recommend putting in a button just because that's gonna, that, that's the consumer answering the question, well, what do I do now? How do I take advantage of this event or this offer? Maybe I want to, um, start a newsletter and let people know that, hey, if you sign up for this newsletter, it's 15% off of your first service. So I'll have sign up here and then I'll just attach a link. I like how I'm just pointing at my screen, even though I know <laughs> this is a virtual class. <laughs> I do that all the time. Oh my goodness. I feel like a lot of people do. Yeah. Yeah. And again, these creating posts, it's the more information you put on your GMB account, the higher you are going to be on their listing and the, the higher likelihood you'll be on in that initial map pack, those first three searches. So we click on the next one. We're going into info. This is easily editable um, information. Uh, one thing that I really like about this is that it's just all of your info is in one space. And if I scroll down, you can see previously where we marked when we were closed. So library, public library, we close on, um, we're closed during holidays. This is where we would update that information. Again, it's just things that are easy. I might actually click here so you can kind of get a little bit more information about attributes. So we can identify as Latino, as veteran, women owned. We have maybe assistive hearing. We have wheelchair, wheelchair accessible restrooms and seating. So I might, I mean, we could just click on that to include on it. Um, I'm going to cancel because I don't want to <laughs> oh, edit anything before, right before the promotion of our marketing and promotions team. <laughs> um, but that's just an example. Uh, and also the ad opening date, the longer your business has been in business, the more credibility you're giving to yourself. So you might see on some Google My Business accounts, it's like open since 2017. That tells someone like, oh, they're not new. That's credibility. I'm going to trust them more because they've been in business for the past five years. Absolutely. Or whatever. Yeah. So I feel like I'm going a little fast, but I'll slow down. I don't think we have any questions, but I'm so excited about this next section. I think it is the most amazing thing because I love information. I love data. So insights are really going to tell us as business owners if it's worth it for us. The constant updating of our GMB. Um, it's also going to tell you how people are finding out about your business, how they're interacting with it. If they're, maybe they're clicking on the phone link, maybe they're coming to my website. So we have um, essentially three main insights, or at least that I think are really worthwhile. First one is how customers search for your business listing. So these are essentially three components, direct searches. So um, people who Googled Champaign Public Library. Uh, we have discovery. So that is customers who found you by searching for maybe just public library, um, public library near me. And then branded, um, that's who's people who stumbled upon your business by searching for a specific brand or a brand related to your business. That's our lowest because again, we're a public entity. Um, we're not gonna have a specific brand. Um, all right, and I love this too because you can kind of see historically, you can change when people are searching for you. I mean, it's cool just to see like in the past week, we've had 10,000 searches that people have done over Google trying to find our business. And that's pretty incredible just because it gives you information on like 
your audience, how many people want your product or service. So if I scroll down a little bit more, um, I think this is personally my favorite thing. Uh, so asking yourself, what do people do once they visit my listing? So once they click and kind of open up that GMB profile. So again, I think it's one of the most useful reports available in this analytics and this insight location because it summarizes what customers did after they found your business, um, whether they visited your website, we can see that here, whether they asked for directions, whether they clicked on the call button, if we have um, a call there. So this is fascinating too, because I mean, Laura and I, we both work the reference desk. We know we get a lot of phone calls a day, but it's cool to see how many people this past week called us. So we don't have enough week, no, not enough data. This past month, um, 375 people called us by just Googling and then clicking on that specific listing. So they didn't even Google CPL phone number. They just selected the specific profile that we made and called us through that profile. Um, so I think I know. I know I do that a lot these mm -hmm. days now. I mean, I'm not adding places into my contacts. I'm I really do. I Google it a lot. If I'm like looking for a particular restaurant, I'm going to Google them and probably click the call button from my cell phone. So, yep. Yep. It's so, it's so interesting. Just again, this is information on your audience, information on your customers. You're able to like, okay, so if a lot of people are going to my website, maybe I should spend some time optimizing my website for a better user experience. Um, or maybe I need to have more signage because a lot of people are wondering to know where we are. And on that note, directions request. This is where people ask for the directions. A lot of people within a mile um, do not know where we are located. So maybe we want to invest in some billboards like, hey, public library right around the corner, literally two steps away. I don't know, something cheesy like that. Um, and if you're confused as to how this information came about, uh, cell phones. Any, Google is not a free service. You are using it in exchange. Well, you're using it and the currency you're paying them in is all the information about yourself. So these are people who maybe they were searching on their phone. This is where they were because your phone has geotagging. Um, when they tried to find uh, where we are, directions to us. So again, this is really great information for marketing. Um, Maybe I'm seeing that we do have a couple of clients or, or people who want to know, like 17 people from Muhammad. So maybe I, instead of focusing on Muhammad, if I wanted to get some Muhammad people coming into my business, I want to focus on this area closest to us because that's where um, these people are at the time that they're searching us, searching for us. So it just, again, can change your marketing strategy by getting some amazing information from your audience and customers. Um, and this again is great information. Maybe on Mondays, looks like we get the most calls. Um, we should, and it also has time of day. So when do people call? This is great for us, especially as people who answer the phone uh, phone all the time. Maybe we need to have extra people at the desk in the morning. Maybe in the evening, we don't need to worry about having four librarians out there. We can um, move around our staff to better facilitate the needs of our customers. So we also have photo views, and that's something that I think is really fun, too. Um, and it compares you to businesses like you. Uh, and you can just see how many people actually look at our photos. We have not been posting photos of our business. So I am not surprised that <laughs> it's it's severely down since the last time we posted a photo. Um, and then it just gives you information here. Uh, the last thing I really want to focus on um, that the dashboard is perfect for is reviews and messages. Messages, Laura had talked, we talked about it a little bit. Um, and this is really why it's worth maybe getting the app and putting it on your phone, just because more than likely you probably have your phone with you all of the time. Um, 
you can essentially, you'll get notified when someone messages you, when someone asks a question and you can respond really easily. Um, and same with reviews. Reviews are so important. Again, 88% of people base their choice of, of visiting your business because of reviews. Um, and it's good practice to actively reply to individuals. So maybe um, this is where you might want to have a review response strategy where you convey to your team, hey, whenever someone leaves a positive review, we thank them, we make it personal, um, and we maybe invite them to come again um, if someone leaves a negative review. Like, so our deputy director, someone didn't enjoy their time at CPL. She did an amazing response of like, first, acknowledging the fact that they've left a review, thanks for letting us know, and then taking the conversation off of a public platform, giving them the opportunity to see how we can better their experience at the library by putting her name and her personal email. That's fantastic. Um, also, Laura, I realized we have four minutes left of our presentation. So I think I'm going to skip over quite a few things. Um, yeah, I think we've covered a lot of the things that we set out to just to give you, give everyone like a, an overview on how to complete their profile. Absolutely. Um, and on the PowerPoint, which we will send out, it has more information on how to get more reviews to, again, the more reviews that you have, how you're going to be up there, the more people who are going to interact and engage with your post. And also, here's some tips on how to maintain a high listing, um, which is, again, just interacting with your customer base, providing kind of information for them to interact with as well. And I don't think we have any questions, Laura. This was a I don't wonderful think so way. Either to spend my afternoon. <laughs> um, so thank you everyone for joining us today. I am looking forward to seeing uh, quite a few new GMB profiles in the Champaign-Urbana area. And I do want to plug in our next webinar is this coming Monday at 7 p.m. with Hope Linker. She is a social media strategist and she's going to be going in how to build your audience and establish trust on Instagram. So I highly recommend it if you want to up-level your marketing strategy and really establish more leads within customers and increase your overall sales. So once more Important stuff, yeah, I know, especially we love to make that money, honey. Mm -hmm. um, so connect with us. If you want to talk more about how to optimize your Google My Business profile, reach out. You can set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment with myself, with Laura, with anyone on our team. Um, you can give us an email, librarian at champagne.org. Give us a phone call or visit our website to chat with us. Um, Laura, this was wonderful. Wonderful, Madeline. You did an excellent job. <laughs> Likewise. I, I hope that I hope that we've eased some um, if you're anxious about, you know, getting a profile set up or just not sure how it what it looks like. I hope that this has helped you to have the confidence to get your business on Google. Absolutely. And never fear, we're always here. Always Should here. I I think I might coin that. Copy no, I think trademark. you should. For sure. The, that's our new library slogan. Just kidding. Just yeah. ours. Just me and Madeline. All, All right. right. Well, thank you again. And Laura, thank you for hosting this one. Of course. Thank you, Madeline. Have a nice afternoon, everybody. Bye. Bye.